Okay, I uh, what I want to do is go over a couple of little things on the wedges that uh, we're going to offer as a new change form. Um, so with the more testing that I've done for stage one to stage twos, um, I'm modifying the design in the wedge. So, so basically what I've done is I've taken, I've taken a um, stage one wedge um, and I've created a stage two wedge. And um, what this one is, is the difference between this one is, is it's shorter um, than the stage one wedge. Now the stage one wedge creates a lot of torque. But when you go to a stage two port and everything, um, we change the runner length. And so what happens is the distance from here to the wedge um, actually ends up being, uh, let me see if I can get this straight. Hold on. So basically, um, the, the very edge of the VRP plate, hold on. So if this is your VRP right here, right? Um, the distance changes between the top of the wedge to that very corner of that VRP right here. Um, so what we're doing is um, when you do a stage two and you lower the runners, um, you're actually moving it farther away. So you're creating more space for the airflow to get through there, even though it's being diverted by the wedge. Um, when you're doing a stage one, you're not, you're closer. So you're using a taller wedge for it to create that velocity and torque. Um, at lower RPMs. So for guys that are wanting more, a little bit more horsepower um, on the a ported kegger, um, even a stage one, um, this shorter wedge that I'm, I'm putting together here, um, and I'm printing them out now, uh, there it is right there. Um, let me show you the difference between the stage one and the stage two. Whoops, sorry, I'm not going to do that. My bad. Let's get this back up to where it needs to be. Oh, man, I've got to change something. Yeah. Automatically draw. That's good. Okay, we're good there. Okay, there's the first one. And then we'll go to a stage two. Take this one. And, oh, nope. See, my brain's not working. Not enough coffee. Uh, stage one. Right there. Open. Wait, 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 wait. We want not the project, just the. I'm gonna rotate this. Rotate. Ah, come on. Sometimes I grab the wrong setup here. Okay, good. And separate these two so you can see them a little better. And now you can see from the side. Um, so basically, what what we've got here is a difference in height from where the where the wedge actually blocks airflow to create that velocity. Um, so you can see with the smaller stage two here compared to the stage one. Uh, the stage one is just for extreme velocity, low RPM torque, below 3,000 RPM. So the stage two is a smaller. Uh, wedge that's going to allow more airflow between the VRP and the plate to get to the runners. Um, so it's going to increase the velocity in the CFM uh, from 3,000 to 5,000 RPM uh, compared to one that does below 3,000 um, to, uh, uh, well, basically 1,500 to 3,000 is where this, this guy really performs. So that'll be the two. So we're gonna offer a stage one and a stage two. So when you send an intake manifold in and you do a stage one setup, you're gonna get this one included with it, with your VRPs. Um, and let's just say the gap from here to here is 1.2 um, inches for the air to get through. The gap from here to here is gonna be two inches. Um, when you, when you uh, send your manifold in for a stage two, we're going to start now offering this one here. And uh, I do set the runners to usually on a stage two based upon what the customer is doing. Um, they got to tell me a couple of things. Um, I ask them a few questions on it. And then um, they'll, uh, then I determine what my runner length will be. But typically it's a, between an 11, 12, and a 13-inch runner um, average is where I, I work at. And then I go for a 14-inch runner um, on a stage one. Um, so remember... Um, 
it's about building torque when you're using a long runner and tape manifold. And uh, I think that's, that's you know, I mean, obviously Dodge nailed it when they, they created that. I think they could have probably made a better, you know, intake manifold from the beginning um, with larger CSA in there, but it is what it is. Um, so anyway, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, end up offering a stage one and a stage two wedge, and then um, you can switch those out. Because, uh, like I've said before, if you want to, if you're if you're just trying to get dyno numbers on there and horsepower numbers on a truck, don't even put the wedge in. The wedge is simply to build torque from 4,000, 3,000, 2,000 RPM. It's all those areas right there. That's all it's made for. It's not to increase the horsepower, any of that. But changing changing the amount of airflow that gets past this wedge here is going to change the amount of top end horsepower that you will make. Um, at the same time, while still retaining uh, the low low speed RPM fill, kind of like the um, uh, the inserts we used to do back in the days of the turtles, back on the uh, M1 manifold. Um, it was really hard because they were so small. I think if they would have made those a little bit bigger, we would have done done better with those. But but anyway, so there you have it. Um, that's going to be our uh, newest offering. Is uh, obviously the old stage one wedge and the stage two wedge. And you can obviously switch back and forth between the two. You're just changing your belly pan out. That's all you are. And then bolting the, the setup on the bottom. And the same thing. There's still running threaded inserts on the bottom and insides of these um, with uh, quarter 20 bolts. And then you Loctite that to the bottom of your uh, aluminum plate or whatever plate that you've got. Um, if, even if it's a stock one. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, we will talk to you guys next time. Later.